Hello there and welcome to this tutorial. I'm Morris Dimba and today we are going to create a custom component of a concrete column base with steel bars or rebars. Join me by subscribing to this CAD educational channel and also don't forget to enable your, uh, your no notification bell to get notification anytime at any moment we upload a new content or tutorial. So if you take a look on the screen here you can see a default not actual default I've, I've, uh, I've actually defined this uh, grid line so we we want to create a custom co uh, uh, column base a custom column base with st uh, with rebars already inserted or steel bars now we'll come to applications and component here and uh, the moment you mouse over this button here you'll be able to read this uh, applications and component this is where we get all the tools available in tecla structures and all the macros are found here all the tools that si will simplify your work or make your your work uh, much easier you get all of them from here now now let me go ahead and click on that so if i click on it you'll be able to see uh, a number of tools that we'll be using so we'll be using start above for for footing and we'll be using and we w and we'll be using uh, not strip footing. We'll scroll up and uh, we'll use this pad footing reinforcement. So first of all, we want to create uh, a dummy, a dummy pad footing, and uh, a concrete column base. So we'll be uh, putting our reinforcement, and we'll convert uh, the two components, the the column and the pad footing, to be one component with rebars already inserted so whenever you want to create uh, a column base all all will be re will be read by tecla structure as one component and all these will have the rebars inside so we'll go straight to uh, to concrete under tecla structures so i'll come to uh, footing and click on this drop down arrow here and click on that so i'll be able to pick on the first option pad footing right there so let me just snap on this on this in intersection here so i'll snap right here so the moment i snap there you'll be able to see we have a pad footing already in place so let me just rotate this so that so that you see how it sits well or it is positioned with this with this uh uh with this a uh, grid line so what i'm going to do slightly i'm going to double click on it on it just to check on its settings and uh, and uh, and its placement of the zero zero level so it's closer to zero level so we want to take it down by 10 by 1050 just 1050 right there negative 1050 so if you click on that it's slightly it's going down by that so let me slightly add some measurements here for 50 for 50 right there so if i come here and click ok you'll be able to see it has gone slightly down so this is what we want actually so i'll come to ne negative uh, to ne navigate there and we'll be able to pick uh, uh, our rotation point and press the left button with the mouse and be able to hold that left bun uh, left button mouse and you'll be able to rotate it like this so i'll right click and exit from that command by by uh, by clicking interrupt to take us off that command now we are going to place a uh, column base on top of this uh, pad footing so i'll come to concrete once again and this will take me to a lot of uh, tools that are available for concrete work so i'm going to pick on the column base so i'll pick on the column right there and snap on this intersection of of, of two grid lines so i'll snap on that so you'll be able to see we have a, a column base sitting right on top of this uh, member so let me just double click on it so that uh, i'll be able to see the properties of this column so prior to that you can see our column size or, or column profile is uh 600 by 600 this is uh, the size of our column this 600 this is 600 so you can modify or rectify the size to customize what to, to match your description or your your parameters so let me just press control 2 so that we see everything inside how this part footing is connecting with our par, uh, with our column base let me come to view and the moment you click on view you, you will be able to pick you, you will be able to access this navigation 
button so i'll pick on the first option of rotate with mouse i'll select on that so i'll, I'll go i'm going straight to pick on uh, to pick on my rotation point so my rotation point will be on that spot so if i i i, I press and hold my left button with the mouse i'll be able to rotate this component like this so if you take a look here you can see our column slightly way off the base so this will create some uh, will be will create some difficulty because uh, when we place our starter bars they will be hanging on top so let me show you what i'm talking about so i'll come to i'll come to applications and component here i'll click on that and scroll down to 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 pad footing reinforcement i think i'll find them here i'll select on that and snap on this let me snap snap there and we'll be able to see we have this in place we have rebars already inserted so i'll come here and rotate this so that we, you can see whatever we are talking about we have our rebars already in place so remember this uh we've created with a macro so if you want to con uh, convert this to a macro once again and try to ins and and try to work it work with it as a macro it might clash or it or it might not work properly so what you'll do once you've created this uh, we've created this we'll go ahead and and explode everything so that they appear as individual components uh, as individual parts or uh, as individual parts so that uh tecla structure cannot read it will not be will not be able to read it as a macro used to create another macro uh to simplify uh, uh the workflow now let me come to navigate and i want to modify i want to rectify i want to rectify the depth of this of this column base so if i if i rotate it like, like this you can be able to see it's far off the bottom end of our of our pad footing so let me just adjust place some adjustment here by going ahead and clicking on it double clicking on it and i'll be able to adjust it slightly so what i'm going to do here i'm going to just add some measurements here i'm going to just place 1050 just uh, feed in 1050 right there and see how and see how it it, it connects with our with our pad footing so let me just turn that round and you'll be able to see it's slightly off the point but still this will for the purpose of uh, uh rebar uh, insertion this will work much better for us so we'll just leave it at that spot now let me go and place my rebars on this on this column base so i'll come back here and click on that and scroll down to check on starter bars for footing so i'll click on that we start we to insert starter bars for our for our for our, for our footing that will help us uh, in uh, placement of rebars for this particular column so i'll just snap on i'll just click on this column so the moment I click on it, you'll be able to see we have our rebars already in place. So I'll give into I'll, I'll go into details on how you can modify this uh, the plus uh, uh, the placements of the of these rebars just uh, in just a minute. So you can see how these are placed. If I turn it around like this, you can see how these are placed. Our steel bars are in are in place. So let me just. Uh, walk you uh, slightly on, on on this let me just double click on it so you see our rebars are slightly over protruding or uh, above our concrete so we want to reduce this protrusion or uh, extension so i'll come here and change this either from 200 either to 50. so we just need a small extension of the concrete so once i've done that I'll be able to I'll be able to click modify and you'll we'll be able to see uh, the changes taking effect immediately. So let me just turn that around. You can see that it has changed. And what we are going to do next, I'll, I'll, I want just to confirm to you or show to you uh, uh, the measurements of, of our column base. So to to get that, you can come over to you can come you can come over to locations here, you, and you can see. Uh, uh, this uh, from this corner to this corner it is 600 and uh this this uh when you define this and uh rebars will be able to take into account also uh this uh, the the space that will be taken by uh formwork so normally it 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 requires around 50 millimeter thick or 25 there about and now if you once you've defined the column sizes or the column measurements like i did here 
this is 600 by 600 and you can confirm that by measuring them by measuring this manually or uh, manually like this and you can see at the bottom end here 600 if i right click and terminate that command once again and start another measurement uh, um, another measurement I'll, st I'll start from that end and come to this far end and you can see it's 600 right there so that's how it's done so the hooks here you can change by clicking on that drop down arrow and pick on any here so i ch i picked on this and i can as well pick on a different one by picking on that and click that and you can see how it looks here i'll come to navigation and uh, i'll come to navigator and they want to rotate this so that you can see what i'm talking about so you can see that so let me switch back to where i was and uh, my choice was this and this the commonly used so i'll just click modify and it will be back and uh, it will be it will be taken where you are now once you have this in place so um, there's something that i've forgotten we want to add more ties on this particular column so i'll double click on this just double click and i'll come here and add six we'll make them six of them at a distance of of, uh, of 200 mi uh, millimeter center to center you can see that so i'll go ahead and click on that and you can see if you close that and come to navigate and, and, and i try to rotate this right click and uh, try to rotate this pick my rotation point from that spot you can when you can see we have our our tie bars uh, one has been added at the bottom end here perfect now we want to convert this to a component so that when you uh, when you want to create a column base and pad footing, this will come uh, as one unit as or as one component, uh, pad footing, column base with the rivers already inside. So what you do just to place the base plate and uh, or uh, you can simply create a, a found, uh, uh, anchor ball foundation layout as simple as that. So this will give more information if you generate uh, uh, plan layout or anchor board layout this will also give details of rebars how they're laid inside the concrete this will be very important to the user on site so this is how it looks and now we want to convert this to a simple macro that will help you perform this task if you do this regularly so this will help you so much now we want to convert this to a, a, another macro so you, you can take a look if i mouse over this you, you'll be able to see we are selecting everything so if you just convert it to a macro like this, Tecla will not be able to read it properly. It will read it as, uh, as different co macros combined together. So it might clash. So to make sure that we don't fall into such things, we want to explode it so that every component as, uh, is being read as individual and combined together. So let me just click on this, right click and come to and come to explode component i'll explode that so if i mouse over this you'll be able to see not everything is com is 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 is, is, uh, is joined together or uh, there's no they're not grouped together so i'll come back to ties here i'll select on that then right click and come to ungroup i'll ungroup everything so if i mouse over this you'll be able to see that individual bars i'll do the same thing at the bottom end here I'll, sel I'll select on these rebars, right click and come to explode. I'll explode everything there and try and mouse over this. Right click and come. Just click and right click and come to ungroup. Ungroup that. So if you try to select to select on, on, on this component, you'll be able to see uh, they, are, uh, they are individually selected. So let me just do that to that one also. So we have everything disconnected to each other so let me try and uh, disconnect this also I'll, I'll, I'll ungroup that so we have this in place so let me come to navigate here and try to rotate this like that and this is what we have in this particular time and place and we want to now place it in in a, in a position that will be able to uh, create a uh, screenshot uh, a nice sc screenshot so prior to going to screenshot creator or, or uh, creating a, a screenshot, or, or, uh, I mean from this, I'm going to get getting started to define our macro. So once I've done with this, I'll just mouse over uh, inside this section, then right click and come to new group. 
I'll click on new group right here and try and uh, define what I'm trying to create. Uh, let me get rid of this text here and press and uh, type custom custom component right here. Custom component component right there. I have my text in place. So if I click OK, and uh, sometimes it 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 might it, it uh, Techloids will, will 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 try to notify me that we have a similar uh, description inside here. So let, let's just try and click OK. You can see uh, the group name custom component already exists because I tried to create a similar one. So let me just go ahead and click OK because we have one already there. So that is the procedure if you, you, know, you are start you are, you are starting with that that is the procedure you follow with that if you want to create a custom component that you feel you you you, you normally use regularly and you feel it is hectic and uh, time wasting to create it several time uh, any moment you want to create a similar uh, structure or or, uh, or component so once you've cr you've you've de you've defined that as a custom component the next step just click on this button here just right click and come to define custom component here we click on that then uh, once this cu custom component with wizard comes up come to types and notes and uh, under type just click on this drop down arrow and pick this option here part so define whatever you are creating here we w you want to create uh, column base or just type or press control uh, cup cups th there and uh, column base. I'm just type column base, column base. Right there. What I'm ri writing right there, the column base. We have that. Let me just uh, uh, the column base one. You know, let me just place one right right there. I'll just place zero 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 one. That right there. So once you've you've done that. This is the name of the component we are creating. So this name will appear here and uh, with this symbol. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and uh, give it uh, 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 an image or a thumbnail. So I'll go ahead and uh, come here and click sen select. Uh, I mean, go to next. So if you take a look here, you can see in the model select object that will form the custom component. So this is what I want to select. I'll select everything here. So the moment you select that, you'll be able to see this next button becomes active. And the moment you click next, you'll be prompted with another, with another request, part position. And in the model, select one or two position that uh, you'll be holding on in when, when you want to, play, uh, to place it on your grid line. So I want to uh, pick, I want to pick uh, the intersections of these two grid lines because this is where we, 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 we will be placing this component. So I'll snap on that spot. So once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click finish. So the moment I finish, you'll be able to see everything is, is combined as one component. So let me, if I click outside and press control four, just to get rid of that, you'll be able to see we have this in place. It is one component already in place. So. If I come on my right here, you, you'll be able to see we have the component here. We have the component here. I tried to create a similar one. So I wanted just to show you how to do this. So we have this one just, uh, just next to the previous one that I created. We have the column base. So we want to give this an, a, th uh, a thumbnail similar to this. So let me just, let me just uh, scroll, bring it closer. We'll bring this closer like that and uh, come to navigate here and try to turn it slightly to a position that uh, will be more appealing or look more detailed when you try to access it. So this could be the best position to me. So I'll right click and, and click and click interrupt to, to, to terminate that rotation command. So the next step I'm going to do is to create a thumbnail. And to create a thumbnail is very, very simple. We, you come to uh, screenshot and uh, view here. So come to screenshot and pick the first option, screenshot. Pick on that and come to make sure you, when you're creating a, a thumbnail, make sure you print a file. So you, you'll be able to track your, your screenshot 
inside this file or inside this folder name here like, like we did name this as concrete base so i'll come to options here and click on options and it you must have a, a white background here here so just go ahead and click apply and give it an okay and uh to make it this accurate what i'm going to do is very simple i'll try to hide this grid line but it, is, it doesn't matter so what i'm going to do just drag this slightly away so that we don't when you, when we dis, when we define our camera view we will not include this so let me go ahead and click uh, pick view so i want to define this from that end to this end i'm defining my camera view from that spot to this spot so whatever you're seeing uh, uh, the the square uh, you're seeing on the screen the green square you are seeing on the screen this is the camera view i'm still holding my left button on the mouse so I'll, re I'll i will release it on that position so once i've released it on that position i'll go ahead and click capture and it has been captured so just go ahead and click close that so the moment you close that you can go and follow that screenshot on this folder through uh, i mean on this folder and how do you follow how do we track that we'll come to that and we can find it here we have a new one i had created a previous one so we have a new one here so what we can do with this we can just double click on this and we have it in in place so we want to crop this to make it slightly pronounced or make it some, uh, 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 slightly bigger so i'll come to crop i'll pick on crop here and try and drag this try and drag this let me just drag that closer to that end and drag this one also bring this close to that point i think th this this is okay and i'll go ahead and click uh, save a copy and i'll be asked where to save this i'll just type uh column base column base right there and i'll save it here so i'll click save it, it, and it has been saved i'll go ahead and close close this and close this one also so i want to insert this uh that thumbnail or the image i've just created and replace with this default image so i'll just right click on top of this and come to thumbnail here and click on that and uh, i'll click on add thumbnail and this will take me to to column base so i'll select on that and come to open so we'll have this in place and the root source of this image we have that you can it can be tracked all the way to that component so i'll disable this or i'll check i'll uncheck that and this and this will be uh, this will be replaced with this one so i'll just go ahead and close that so once i've done that i'll go ahead and now delete this because we want to add more we want to add uh, column bases along along this end and along that end so i'm going to use this particular tool to add this component here so I'm, I'm i'm just going to insert it right there and select on that and insert another one right here so i can select these two press control and select this one also and try to count how many do we have we have one two three four five six and seven remember we have one already in place so in total we have six so we want to right click and come to special copy here and click linear and come to xyz plane and we want to work with x x axis because we are moving this direction but we'll be moving the opposite direction of x so our dimension will be prefixed with a negative sign so let me just feed in a negative sign there and feed in six meters because th this distance to this distance is six meters so we'll we will have to respect that if we want to uh, to get a result that we will be matching whatever you want we expected to see now how many do you want to have six of this and we'll go ahead and click uh, copy we've created excess but don't mind we'll go ahead and cl click expand and uh, click ok click close th that and uh, we'll go ahead and right click and uh, fit to work area fit work area to entire model like that so we have this in place so this is how you create your tools as simple as that in tech structures so it will be, it will be very simple you can just come here and start placing your your steel your steel columns you can just snap you can just snap on top of this and you can place your steel columns 
So first of all, uh, with this, if you, first of, you, you first of all have to identify the midpoint between these two points. So to identify your midpoint, you just come to this, to this end, and snap on that spot, and snap on that spot, and, and there we have our midpoint. So we, let's try and insert our column top of this. So I'll come, to, I'll come to that spot and come to steel column here, and uh, try to snap our column right there. So you can see it's, it, it, it has gone all, all the way to zero zero level, and don't mind. We'll uh, will define its end its end point to a particular point we want it we want it to end right there. So, so let's just double click on it and come to this far end. And what we are going to do, we are going to just bring this to zero level and click OK. And still not OK. We we'll just type. Uh, that and uh, feed in here 350 and we'll trim that to to a particular point we just trim that le let's just trim that to 350 right there so that will end up slightly on top here so let me just continue trimming that uh, add three that that way and we have it slightly on top so this is uh, this should be a very simple thing to do, and replacing the columns should not be uh, a very d a very difficult task. And we'll be doing this repeatedly. And we have if you have any question, just type it there in this comment, and I'll be able to respond back to you in um, in, a re on, in a record time. So let's try and place our tie beams here. But the tie beams, uh, I, uh, I'll do another component if you've not mastered this i'll do another component that uh, will help us we'll, we'll show you i'll show you how to place the rebars on the car on the beams and you'll be able to you you'll be able to have these two components together so thanks a lot for watching this video and for watching this tutorial and uh, uh, for, uh, watching this tutorial and don't forget to subscribe to this channel once again don't forget to enable your notification bell so that whenever we drop an, uh, a video you'll be able to get a, notif a notification and for you to watch uh, at appropriate time so let me just turn this so that you can see actually what we've actually created we have actually uh, we have created this so i can switch back to plan view and you'll be able to see this from top you can see on top of this we have this in place already there we have that in place so what is what is lacking here just uh, the plinth beams that will be connecting all these beams or all these uh, um, pad footing or column bases together so when you place your steel column on top you're sure of safety and uh, longevity of of your structure or uh, a long lifespan of your structure so this is how it looks from top view. You can see that the ties and uh, the main bars already in place. So thanks a lot and let's meet then on the next presentation. Once again, I'm Morris Dimba and bye-bye. Stay safe.